Great, thanks. Yeah, I just wanted to reiterate, maybe say it in another way. When we think of patterns, I think of the zoomed out part, you know, the why are we doing this? And as we keep saying, this common thread, this weaving, and then practices or how, what are these partners actually doing on the ground with the students? And I just celebrate all of you that sharing was so perfectly both of those elements. You said why we do these things and where our principles and the reasoning and seeing the whole child and connecting with nature and then really practical tools of you know what you actually do when there's a beautiful group of children in front of you and how to deliver it and listen and what your role is as their guide and as an adult so just to emphasize these patterns and practices comes throughout the whole project and uh, for the others there listening in I, I just love to see the nods and the smiles and the resonance um, as you hopefully come here reading the title and say that that's what you were curious about learning about um, which is a smooth transition into the next section of our webinar, which is really showcasing those tools and what you can take with you that we will make freely available to yourselves and anyone that you're excited to share this with is, um, you know, you've been listening, you heard a great idea, maybe you're taking some notes, I love seeing people jotting ideas down, but we're going to give you these tools, um, case studies, the, the in-depth journey that everyone's gone through, and then some activities, some of their favorite things to do, and also how you can engage your wider community of practice to get into the depth of, of what all of this means. So, and also just a bit of framing for the, the rest of the session, we would love to um, invite you to connect with each other. We always get feedback that people love that part of webinars. So the next section, um, our other members of the team are gonna share in detail those three resources that we've worked on. And after that, we'll invite you to choose which one you have the most curiosity and go into a smaller group, maybe ask questions, clarifications, maybe give some feedback. We're always open to that. So as you're listening to these three uh, presentations, think about where your curiosity is sparked and what you'd like to learn more about. Um, and, and you'll have a chance to connect with everyone there. And to reiterate, if you heard someone we're calling our partners, our practitioners, explaining a methodology, we've got their in-depth story recorded. So you'll have a chance to, to learn much more about them. As Thaisa said, this is a taste to spark your curiosity. So our next section, you're gonna hear about those three resources and just listen in on where you feel most curiosity to have a fuller uh, discussion. So maybe I will start with our cards. Eva, if you're available to share the depth of that wonderful, creative, practical tool, over to you. Happy to, give me one moment, I will share my screen. Okay, so the Eco Village design cards are inspired by the existing 32 Eco Village principal cards, um, which are used by a lot of different facilitators and trainers and Jen. Um, and we made a deck. So there's also 32 cards based on the, each design principle. And we really open the question of how do we make this accessible to a younger audience? So uh, it's quite a big range, but we tried to target a uh, youth between six and 12 years old. Um, and we thought of using animals as a tool to help bring these messages to a younger audience. Uh, we had the deck illustrated by eco villages from around the world, which was a really beautiful part that developed during this. And I also really want to keep this open, so I would welcome more art submissions from any student, uh, as long as I'm working with Jen, uh, to be added to the deck so the art part can continue. A bit about like the background and the process of creating the cards. Uh, we knew we really wanted them to be inclusive and create deep connection. So we talked about how to really include all five regions, um, the pros and cons of using photography versus illustration and how illustration kind of opens the imagination up more and uh, doesn't get so specific as photography where you can really tell where you are in the world. Uh, we discussed whether or not to use pronouns for the animals and really how to engage the students through play uh, by also connecting them to nature. We also talked a lot about different elements that we could include so the animals are separated by earth, uh, wind, air, and fire, 
with integral design being a mixture of all of them. Uh, in the early conversations, there was a lot around movements and um, senses, and a spin-off deck was created by two of our partners, which was just wonderful. Um, and then I have created a series of exercises, which we can explore a bit more in the breakout room, um, but these will all be available. There's some for teachers and a lot for students, from one card a day to um, how the cards intermix some partner activities, some group activities, but trying to stay really creative. And then I'll give you a quick preview of what the cards look like before we go into a breakout room where we can explore them in a bit more detail. Um, and again, here they are all based around our dimensions. So the first section is uh, social and we have in social our fire animals that usually are found in the desert. And then we go to our air for culture, just to give you a little sneak peek. And they continue going. And the art has been really amazing to come in. And I don't know, it's been a really fun project. Um, I'm not sure how much detail I should go into. I technically have five minutes, but it's quite fast to share the cards. Um, I would open it up maybe for a minute or two of questions, or if anyone would like to hear a specific card, I'm happy to share that as well. Brilliant. Thank you, Eva. Okay. Thank you all. Maybe next we go over to Bruna. Bruna's going to show our toolkit. And I just want to preface, we started this with thinking of it as a manual. And very quickly, the group said, we don't want a static manual. We're always evolving. We're process focused. So that's why we're now calling it a toolkit, where uh, Bruna's going to show maybe the, the current version, but it will live online and it will be built on. And we have all these components that are always coming in um, as we adapt and as we get new ideas. So it's called now our toolkit. And Bruno, your screen is still loading. There you go. Over to you. Okay. Can you hear me okay? So the resource we created in this project called the Living Showcase and Toolkit consists on two parts. The first of it, the Living Showcase, has an introduction uh, to regenerative education and also regenerative schools and projects. And also there's a glossary of terms of interest suggested by the partners for us to understand them better. For example, the last one you can see is unschooling that was mentioned earlier today uh, by one of the partners. And the, the, um, there's a description of each one of these partners participating in the twinning project. These are links that you can click on and you go dive deeper in each one of them. Uh, their histories, their educational approaches, their strengths, their challenges. We'll share the link later so you, you can have access to them. And it's called a, a live in showcase because it's editable. Uh, it's all like on, um, online and we can change it. Some of the partners, for example, change their names throughout this year. So we can keep this alive and keep updating it while the time goes. And the second part uh, is called the toolkit, consists on a series of educational activities shared by them uh, that they practice with their students and or their communities. They have shared with us to try them out. And the, the activities are structured with goals um, and areas of learning. There are target age groups from three years old to 19, for example. Suggested times that can go from 30 minutes activities to three days or even eight months. Uh, they include background information, material or resources needed, and preparation details. There is also a, an activity flow with steps, reflection questions, and closing for the activities, and a lot of pictures. These are the activities, and there are so, so there are many, I won't show each one of them. We can dive deeper in the breakout later. So who's ever interested is invited to meet us there. But I'll share one per region with a, a picture so you can get a little taste of it. So from Springhouse in the United States, we have the show, Shape Note Singing. 
From Muba Quinza in Aldea Feliz in Colombia, we have the word circle. From the regenerative education and adventures for students in Iceland, we have the forest trip. From the self-directed learning uh, in Kathumba Eco Village in South Africa, we have the natural plant-based fabric dyeing. And from the, the regenerative educators, we have the word circle. So this will be all available also in a brochure, in a printable way later uh, that our, our designer is still working on, Camila, and also live here in the link we will share with you. Thank you. Beautiful. I already feel in myself, even though I know the depths of these, um, how are you going to choose which breakout to go to? They're all exciting. Um, and so if you feel that, that's wonderful because we hope, we're going to say at the end, we hope to have more of this conversation as we build a community of practice. We also hope that some of you here will give us more um, to add to it. We think that all the knowledge is in the room. So while we gathered these uh, practitioners over this year, we really hope to continue it and keep building on all of these tools. So um, yeah, it's hard to choose, but just for now, you'll pick one. Um, and so I'll transition to our third one. This is a teacher training. And Anne Chris, over to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Abby. Wonderful. I will also share my screen to give a little sneak peek into um, the teacher training curriculum we're developing at the moment. And we've also been engaging in this last year, starting in January, we've been engaging about 13 different project partners from our project to join and contribute to the teacher training coming from all over the world from South Africa, Estonia, Mexico, India, Colombia, Brazil, Zambia, Iceland, Ghana, Portugal, Ecuador, USA and Sri Lanka and um, so we started off um, in the beginning of the year by coming together and brainstorming and sharing stories of the different approaches to learning, the different focus areas or the diff different areas of competence and expertise that these projects have developed over the years and uh, really sharing their life experiences and what to them regenerative education meant and what was relevant to include into a teacher training program that we wanted to design throughout this year. And so here we have in this document, there will be an introduction text again about regenerative education. And then um, from all of these stories that we harvested and tried to distract um, or distill patterns um, that we could use to then create a curriculum structure uh, that we could share to a wider audience um, and our aim was really to um, to bring in all the different voices and all the diversity of schools and projects and their special areas of um, expertise and so you can see here the different sessions that we created and we designed that we found as most relevant and most interesting to learn from each partner uh, that has contributed in the project. And just to get, give give you a little overview, we would we start with the question, what is and why do we need regenerative education, which is hosted also by our GEN team, who has been coordinating the, the project throughout the year. And then starting at the very personal inner dimension of regeneration uh, within the educator, within the teacher as the first starting point, the source of regeneration. And then slowly growing into our, our attitudes and our mental models around education, our relationship to education and how we can reimagine regenerative forms of education. And then growing even wider into the school communities and how we can create regenerative communities in and around the schools or the educational communities and projects that we're part of. And um, how we can weave um, these regenerative principles also into the curricula and into the school design and um, bringing in also the, the history 
and um, the culture and the the cultural context and the natural environment of the space and how we can start connecting to um, the region and the area where each project, the local context that each project and each educator who's participating in the training also is embedded in. And then we will also dive into permaculture. We've heard the, the, the term a few times, maybe some of you are familiar with it, some of you, this might be new, but um, permaculture as an approach to learning from and working with nature um, uh, as in the educational context and working with youth and children in schools. And then uh, one other aspect that one of our partners really wanted to bring in is also how can we integrate uh, ecology and technology in the in the current age that we are living in and how can we work with technology also with the students and um, in our educational environments and then in this last part also again coming back to the economic principles the using money and um, economic models and schools and how we can align that with a regenerative approach to education. And then in the end, there will be two sessions around how to really implement these learning processes and project-based based learning processes into um, the settings and the context that the educators are working in. And to close, we we then designed another session just to collect voices and share learnings and explore opportunities for future future ideas and um, exchange amongst all the participants and all the partners. So um, and then for each module we have created a, a more in depth also version and explanation description um, that we will share once it's all ready. So yeah, you're very welcome to join. And also 